And in addition to the practical issues surrounding coronavirus, the outbreak has presented specific dilemmas. Should community leaders, such as rabbis and priests, inform authorities if they know of someone who broke quarantine orders? And what are the ethical principles at the heart of why a person should go into quarantine? Let's break this down with our guest in studio, Rabbi Yuval Chelov is the head of the ethics department of Tsohal, an Israeli organization of Zionist Orthodox rabbis. Rabbi Chelov, thank you very much for being with us this evening. Hi, good evening. It's, it's an interesting uh, look or an aspect of the effect of the coronavirus. We've seen over the past few weeks uh, orders for rabbis um, uh, telling people who do observe their religion not to uh, kiss the mezuzah, that's the religious text in a decorative case, uh, at the entrance uh, of a building, priests around the world being told not to hand those wafers directly into the mouths of uh, worshippers. What do you make of how religion is adapting itself and its practices to this completely modern outbreak? This is the main idea of our department, the ethics uh, department in, in Tsar, of the Tsar rabbis. The main idea is that behind of the special tradition uh, orders, there are basics of ethics, of morality, of the way to behave. And actually, it's more internationality, international. It's not only, you know, your special tradition. And this coronavirus really... Uh, 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 Inspiring, I can say is really inspiring many of the questions. First of all, your self-commitment. If you get orders to be isolated or to close yourself, is it a religious commitment or only uh, something from the government? Then, as you said, our job as rabbis, our, as leaders, what is the border? What, when, when are the boundaries where we say, even though it really dam is damaging the privacy, the intimacy of a person, but the commitment and the obligation towards the society, towards the congregation, it's, is much more important. And therefore, there is a commitment to demonstrate and to say these are the rules and to uh, enforce people to... Uh, protect themselves. And on that point, Rabbi Cherlov, because there are so many cases where this could be complicated for a religious leader, mm -hmm. say someone who is uh, has been exposed to the virus or someone who's uh, next to someone who's exposed mm -hmm. to the virus and is violating quarantine orders, mm -hmm. and in Israel they are quite strict mm -hmm. as compared to the world. Does a religious leader have an obligation to uh, report that person, to try to do something other than offer them uh, religious uh, guidance? Yes, definitely. I say the bottom line. The bottom line is that the health of the society is more important than the uh, freedom of choice or freedom of decision that every individual has. That is the bottom line. But you don't start with the bottom line. The first thing is that a religious leader should do is try to convince, try to pursue try to tell the person to explain it's not only his health it's it's really big scene to cause damage and to make you know people and and, and older people and people that are not protected you know they don't have a, the, there's no vaccine but i, I mean they, they they are in under danger and someone can be guilty and and be the reason that someone died you know to, to speak this language first of all but afterwards, and if it doesn't help, I think that the halacha, the, our rules say that you should, you must. It's not a privilege. It's not something that a rabbi can decide if to do that or not. He must report it to the authorities because his responsibility is also to other people, not only to the privacy and the uh, uh, freedom of choice, of the person that got uh, in order to stay at home. You know, Rabbi Cheryl, of the 14-day quarantine may not sound like a lot to some, but some people uh, battling with other issues, like uh, mental health issues, can find a 14-day quarantine with little or no contact with the outside world very, very strenuous. Can religion, religion offer them some relief in this regard? Yes, yes, because we spoke until now about the ethics of justice, of the right thing to do. But there's also ethics of mercy. And you, first of all, must have empathy, empathy to, to people that are isolated, that are closed, that are in, in home. And it's also our job to, to take care of them. First of all, physically, 
As a rabbi, I must know that everyone in my congregation or in my society has food, has someone that, you know, take, takes care of his children, of his... In many cases, you have to know every one of them in order to do your job as a rabbi, first of all. Then, as you said, mentally, to check if he's uh, alone. I'm, we are now building a, you know, eye learning from far away or the connection and we can use today thank god we can use all the um, possibilities that the internet has given us in order to be connected even if you are close in a room at home and this this is the second thing we must do first of all is to protect and then to ask ourselves what are the positive things that we should do and we are trying to convince all the rabbis, first of all, the Tzohar rabbis, there are hundreds of them, and then later on, more and more to expand the list of rabbis that feel responsible also to the mental health of their congregation members. You know, we hear daily, Rabbi Trello, from health officials, from government officials about what could be done, what should be done. Um, in your view and from your specific experience with the community, are you optimistic that we are handling the situation well and we could see this blow over in some time? My second hat, I'm an expert in um, gene uh, experiments on uh, human bodies an ethics of gene experiment. So I have connection to this thing, but actually the truth is nobody knows. No one knows. We hope that when summer will come and it will be hotter, so there, uh, then the virus will be much more weak and I don't know. It's not, but it's not my job to give those answers. I'm trying to figure out with my friends, with my colleagues, what is the ethical way to confront this crisis and Nobody knows where we are going, but we have a, before we have the future, we have a present. And let's work correctly in the present. An optimistic note to end on. We're certainly happy with that, yeah. Rabbi Cherilov. Thank you very much for this insight, and we wish we had more time with you. That's Isn't right, and, thank and, you. And, and good days. Good days, absolutely. <laughs>